and it is now. Well, before I introduce our speaker this morning, we will leave you riveted to your seats. I'm going to ask you to take that literally and remain riveted to your seats. I know walking across the aisles are movements, please, this morning. So it's with great pleasure and great joy that I introduce our speaker this morning, who needs no introduction, our pastor, Reverend John, and his all-star cast to bring you our Christmas message. Reverend John. Thank you, Vance, and family, happy new Mary to one and all. I've coined the phrase Happy New Mary because when Christmas is past, it kind of still strange to me to say Happy Christmas, but it's still the season and the feeling, and so I do all in one. Happy New Mary. So would you turn to your neighbor and say, Happy New Mary. Happy New Mary. Say, I wish for you all that, I wi that you wish for yourself. I wish for you all that you wish for yourself. And to those people joining us on the World Wide Web, you know Jamaica big. We, you know, we produce greatness in every field of human endeavor. Let us welcome all those who will listen to this service on the World Wide Web by saying to the world, Jamaica to the world, Happy New Mary. Jamaica to the world, Happy New Mary. We wish for you all that you wish. For yourself. Ah, sorry, go. And so it is. Did you enjoy the readings in Jamaica and Patwa? I just, you know, I've, we talk it in various degrees, but it's really hard to read. You know, it, it's, it's really strange. So um, I want to thank Chima and Zari and Zoe for, for that. And of course, we have the, it, it, that's the New Testament, and we had Sonia reading the Old Testament in standard English. I would have given you my talk in Patra too, but since it's on the World Wide Web, I would have needed an interpreter. I'd like to start, though, with a story told by Jamaican storyteller Amina Blackwood Meeks. And I think she got it and adapted it for Jamaica from Ghana. And I got it from her and adapted it to, um, to, to our teaching this morning. As the story goes, one time there was a poor farmer and his family um, eking out a meager living from the land. Well, Christmas was coming, but the crops had failed because of a prolonged drought. And so there was very little to sell in the market in order to buy the things he wanted for his farm, Billy. Now, the farmer had heard that there was a great treasure to be found at the end of the rainbow. I think we've all heard that, that, um, that myth, eh? And he decided to set out in search of it. So he filled a bag with Johnny Cakes, which his wife had made, and he took a big bottle of what we call beverage, which is really a... a a long drink of lemonade, and, and, and set off, so, made with sour orange, and set off to find the treasure at the end of the rainbow. As he journeyed, you know, his mind was full of all the wonderful things he would do for his family and for the other farmers in his district when he found the treasure at the end of the rainbow. So he traveled and traveled, but when he was down to just two Johnny Cakes and two sips of lemonade, he met two strangers on the road who asked him for something to eat. They said, we're hungry. Now, one man said to him, you can't give them your last two Johnny Cake and your last two sip of lemonade because you still have further to go to catch the rainbow's end. But his granny always told him, be kind to strangers because you never can tell you may be entertaining angels. So he gave them his last two Johnny Cakes and his last two sips of beverage. And as they took them, they disappeared. He was kind of perplexed, you know, where did they go? He's looking around. But he decided to turn back home because he couldn't make the journey without the sustenance. And as the puzzled farmer turned back towards his house, the two forest, uh, uh, strangers that had met him, he had gone around a bend in the forest, and there they were again. But now they were looking healthy and robust and like they'd been fed to two Johnny Cake and two sip of beverage. But they looked renewed and restored. And they said to him, because of your kindness, we're going to give you the key to the storehouse that you will find at the end of the rainbow. Go, turn back and go on, and go on. It's, it's just a little way further. So he took the key with gratitude and he went back, retraced his steps, and at the, 
After a short while, he came to his destination, the end of the rainbow. And there was a, a, a cottage there with the door locked. So he reached into his, po his pocket and he found the key and he opened the door. It was pitch black inside. And as his eyes had got accustomed to the dark, he saw another door at the other, on the far wall. So he walked towards it. He opened that door and the door swung out and it opened onto a scene, brightly lit, sunlit scene of fields of all the fruits imaginable, all the foodstuffs and the growing crops that you could imagine. Tangerines, or as we say in Jamaica, tangerines and star apple and orange and all breadfruit and grapefruit and Oti Iti Apple, of all the wonderful things. And he knew in his heart that this was a vision of the prosperity and the potential which existed in his, his, his farm and in the farms that in the neighboring districts around him. So as he was pondering this, in the distance he heard the sound of the John Kun of Fife. And he thought, oh my God, this John Kuna, I miss my home so much. My son dances in a John Kuna troupe, and I, oh my goodness, I wish I, I, I could be with my family right now. You know, that what happens to you when you're at Christmas time particularly, and we have loved ones that are either on this plane of activity or have passed on, and this is the time our hearts really ache to just be close to them. And it's a wonderful time to just do that, to call their name silently and say, I wish for you the glory of the, of the Christ. So his, his heart filled up with, 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 with joy and the bitter sweetness of being away from home. The John Kuna band came closer and he saw that his family and his neighbors were following the band and dancing along. And as he was saying, wow, I'm going to have my family for, with me for Christmas, the two strangers whom he had fed and who had given him the key appeared on either side of him and they said, you have found the greatest treasure. The greatest treasure is your family and your friends and your neighbors and the people whom you meet upon life's path. And I just think it's a lovely story because it, not only does it remind us about the true meaning of this time of year, but it took me back to my childhood, the story of the John Kuna band and the, 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 the son that danced in it. I wanted to be in the John Kuna too, but I was frightened to death of them. And so I would hear the fife in the distance and I would run for the nearest place to hide. And one Christmas, my father took me by the hand and he said, son, you have to overcome your fears because behind those masks are people just like you and me. So put your hand in mine and let's go out on the street and watch the John Kuno. And then there was the sound of the music uh, in the distance coming, the sound of John Kuno. You know what in Jamaica when John Kuno is coming, what we say? John Kuno come, John Kuno, say it with me. John Kuno come, John Kuno come. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not convinced. Let me hear you. John Kuno come. John could not come. Could not come. John could not come. Shh. John could not come. John could not come. John could not come. John could not come. Please stay in your seats.
your seats, you're blocking the camera. Courtney, you'll pass the camera three times. John Kunu, let's give him a hand. We will have more of them, but friends, there's a camera on, and every time you cross the camera, it, it just ruins it for all the people who are going to be watching it on, um, on YouTube. John Kunu is one of the oldest dance forms in Jamaica and was performed on the three holidays allowed to the enslaved Africans in the English-speaking Caribbean, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, New Year's Day, and at the Temple of Light, Christmas Sunday. <laughs> also referred to as John Canoe, as in the boat by the British, the dance steps had European and English elements mixed with African traditions. The more popular steps of the dance included jigs and polkas, open cutout, one drop, and marching time, and what I call the holy golly. John Kunu is a band of masqueraders usually performed in towns and villages at Christmas time, and the characters performing for us today are Billy Uman, Cowhead, Jack in the Green, House, the House Head, and the Devil. I'm going to call them forward one by one because each character represents some aspect of our own humanity. So as I call them up, they will dance for you and then, and then pose on the stage, and I will share the metaphysical interpretation. Please help me welcome Belly Oman. <laughs> Courtney, please sit. You are blocking other people. Please sit. Please sit. I love Belly Woman with her lewd movements and gyrations. Don't you? Give her a hand. Usually played by a man in the, in the tradition of the dame in British pantomime, Belly Woman always gets a laugh. The character symbolizes the bright promise of human potential. If you think about it, you two are pregnant with the possibilities that you came to Earth to demonstrate. And so, Although it is, it is done as a parody and, and is amusing, there is a deeper metaphysical meaning that we are all waiting, we are all pregnant with the, the possibilities that God has given us to share our potential with the world. The tender story of a newborn infant bringing new hope and peace to all humankind is therefore, my friends, your story. It is our story. Each of us has in our lives that call to provide room in the inn of our lives for that tender, wonderful idea of our sonship and daughtership with God, which we call the Christ. Christ wasn't Jesus' his last name. It wasn't Jesus Christ like John Scott. The Christ was his, his sonship with Almighty God. And he proved that each one of us indeed have that blessing. We come with that gift. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High. And then there is Cowhead. Give me some Cowhead music. Dance over the stadium. Dance over the stadium. I don't know if you're going like this, but you have to hug it up. The cow head represents the stubborn part of the whole owner. <laughs> you know, so often, my friends, spirit gives us an inspiration, an urge. That still small voice whispers in our hearts and in our consciousness, do this or don't do this. But my God, we think we know more than God. And so we, my grandmother used to say, you're too own away, pick me. And you're going, come, you're, going, it going, you're going, pay the price because if you don't follow what God say, you're going down the wrong road. Am I right or am I right? So, don't be a cowhead. <laughs> that Christmas, yeah. If you have unforgiveness in your heart, let it go. If you have bad habits that no longer serve you, let it go. I will book you. 
<laughs> if you are in enmity with someone, leave your gifts right where they are, beautifully wrapped for your friends, and say, I forgive you, go free. Free yourself by freeing those people who you have held in enmity or in, in, uh, in uh, held responsible for your hurt and for your pain and for your sorrow. Let it go. Let us say, I release and I let go and let spirit rule my life. Let's say that. I release and I let go and I let spirit rule my life. Let go and let spirit guide you from this day forward. And so now Jack in the Green. Jack in the Green is, is very relevant to today's um, environmental consciousness. Woo! Di -da 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 -di -di -di. Nice. Look like a color Originally a feature of English May Day celebrations, this character symbolizes abundance, a rich harvest of whatever we plant. And we in the science of Mind teaching know you can't plant pepper and get gongo peas. What you sow, you reap. Let us say that together. What you sow, you reap. And so, Jack in the Green is to remind us that as we close out the last of the teens, you know, this year, and we enter a new decade, 2020, which here at the Temple of Light we have dubbed 2020 Year of Plenty. <laughs> you like it? And I want to just, this is a shameless commercial, invite you to church next Sunday morning at this time, and again on Monday evening at 6, because we'll be having our annual um, New Year's work. New Year's workshop in which we are going to plant the seeds. So Sunday morning we prepare the soil. You know, before you plant out a garden, you have to prepare the soil. So Sunday morning we do the we we'll do the spade work, and and then Monday evening at six we meet here in the spiritually charged atmosphere of the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living to plant the seeds of plenty that we wish to experience and to enjoy in the new year. So. Th you are, you are invited to do that. It is such a love and a pleasure to have this troop of dancers. They come all the way from St. Mary, you know. Um, so it's amazing, yeah. Here we have another one, just like the other one. The house is special, so the house, the house is special. In my father's house are many mansions. Come over the side, yeah. Come over the side, yeah. That's a man. Give him a hand. <laughs> Metaphysically, a house represents what? Our consciousness. Wow. So when the master teacher and we show us said, in my father's house are many mansions, he was indicating that there are many levels of consciousness, my friends. Many of us, like Jesus, were born in humble circumstances, but Jesus proved that we need not be constrained by our origins. That is the message I take to the General Penitentiary, the Adult Correctional Center on Tower Street in Kingston every Tuesday. You are not constrained by your origins. You are not what you have done. You are the beloved of the Father in whom he's well pleased. And just like the prodigal, the prodigal wandered away from home. Where was the Father all the time? The Father Ayad, waiting, waiting with in silent repose for the return. And the, the good book says, come to his senses. 
and returned. I'm going to read it in Patwa and learn it. And by the way, I have an assignment for you. You think I was going to escape? Yeah. Your assignment, should you decide to undertake it, this week is to Google the Jamaica Patwa Bible and find the Lord's Prayer and read it in Patwa. And I'm going to have it in the program next week. That's next Sunday, This is the first Sunday of the new year. And we're going to read it in Patwa together. How is that? <laughs> Two people say good, I'm put up my hand. Good. So this idea of the house, you know, friends, fascinates me because a lot of people refuse to come out of this table. And those that brave it and leave this table and find their way into the, into the great house content themselves with living in the basement, which is dark and really used to store um, stuff that you, 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 you don't use every day. Not true. Upstairs is full of light and furnished for your comfort. And that is why the master calls us to come up, to rise up in consciousness and to live the life more abundant that is ours by divine right of being in the great house of God's abundance and God's love and God's treasures and God's light. So I want to invite you this Christmas to come upstairs in consciousness to grasp the truth of your divinity and to live from that truth. You know, our, our um, consciousness raising quadrant of this Thriving Ministry Initiative has us all a little tagline that we use at meetings. Every encounter is an opportunity to raise consciousness. Let every encounter you have with everybody along life's path this Christmas time and in the new year be an opportunity to lift people up so that nobody leaves your presence feeling like they're, they're chained in the basement of lack and limitation and, and separation from God. Because, my friends, we in this church teach, we in this church know, and we in this church live from the truth that God is the only presence and power in your life, in creation. There can be no power that is opposed to God. One God. Can we say that together? One God. And so we know, my friends, that in that truth, the only devil is the one in the back of our minds that give, make us the co-head, that gives us the doubt, and that believe, makes us believe that we're not good enough and that we're not enough, and that if you want good, your nose must run, and all those lies we have been taught. There is only God. And so that the devil is here to remind us of this everlasting truth. One God, the devil. I want him to joke those people who don't come to church. behind me, right, Jesso? You know that story about the pastor's wife who brought this most gorgeous dress for Christmas, and when she was putting it on Christmas morning, <laughs> when she was putting on the, the frock Christmas morning, he said, but darling, we, we took her we made a promise we're not going to, to spend any money on more clothes. You have enough clothes. We have four closets full of can I find a place to put me one Sunday suit. She said, I know, but I passed it, darling, and it just called to me. He said, but you know what to do? She said, yes, I know, but I find it in my hand, and I, it, the frock in one hand and the credit card in the other at the cashier. He said, you should have said, get thee behind me. Satan. Satan. She said, I say it, and him said, look, damn good, pon your from behind too. <laughs> So my friends, when the world tries to convince you that there is some power other than God, put your hand metaphorically in your father's hand, just like I did in my daddy's hand to go out on the streets mm -hmm. to watch the John Kuna band 70 years ago. And just say, over to you, God. This trip is your trip. And the psalmist said, you know, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Can we say that together? 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Remember the rest of it? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Wow. What a thought to take with you every time you leave your house. Stop sending WhatsApp about, some of them know even happening in Jamaica. And some of them, you know, about be careful on the streets. We know where to be careful on the streets. I'll tell you what you do. Before you leave home, pray. And surround your car and your home and your family and your loved ones with the light of the living Christ, the presence and power of God in your life. And nothing but good can come to you. This is the greatest treasure, your oneness with God, your oneness with your neighbors, your oneness that you share with all humankind. And so, I'm not afraid of nothing. Because my hand is in the hand of the Father, metaphorically. And that is our assurance that now and into the new year, we walk with God. And I saw it go. Namaste. Music, music, music. Give us a last dance. You know, Hannah, head of Jim, you want to come in Paris? celebrating the greatest treasure the Christ potential within all human beings and within every other living and sentient being as well as things that are even inanimate God is in everything and there is only God so behind our John Cooney masks shines the beauty of our real spiritual identity asking like the Christ if there's room in the inner of our lives let him in now and so it is I saw it go